Hey there, this is Mike Kaufman from High Five History with a quick tutorial on Google Drawings showing you how to group and order. So these are two key features when using Google Drawings um, that really allows you to do more with this uh, Google app. So instead of just creating uh, simple images to print or to show, by grouping and ordering it allows you to create activities, allows you to move things around on Google Drawings and, and things sticking together and so forth. So let me show you what I mean. Alright, so here I have a sort activity that I've set up for my students. It's our unit of the Renaissance and we're taking a look at some of the most important people and I want them to evaluate. All right, so we've already studied these people from the Renaissance and I want them to evaluate um, how much of an impact they had on the time period. So I'm starting off for a do now having them do a sort. So what I've done is I've created a chart I've added in some important people from the Renaissance and I put it in here. I would then share this uh, link with students. I could either do it as a whole class activity or I could share it with just individual students and have them do it on their own. I'll remember when you're using Google and you want to share a document but you don't want student, or you want students to make a copy, if you go up to the link, you click on it and erase where it says edit and type in copy and then if you share this link with your students they'll be prompted to make a direct copy. So that's a quick tip to remember. All right, getting into ordering and arranging. So here in my sort, if a student went to move, let's say Moore, Thomas Moore, and moved him into a category, let's say they felt this person was had some impact. Well, now you can see two problems have happened. One, Moore has now disappeared behind my chart, which is not good. And two, his name got left behind. So here's how sorting, um, here's how, I'm sorry, arranging and ordering are going to help us. So, first thing, I want this chart to always be in the background, right? I want my people over the Renaissance to come on top of it. So I'm going to click on it. I notice now it's highlighted. I'm going to go up to where it says arrange. And I'm going to go where it says order. And I'm going to send it to the back. Now, if I send it backwards, it's just going to move it one thing behind whatever the last image that was created. But if I send it to the back, it'll send it all the way to the back. So I'll show you what that means. I click there, and now Moore's uh, picture, the image of Moore, reappears. Right? And now this will be the case for any of the other images. Right? It's all now going to go on top of my chart. All right, now to solve the second problem. I wanted to make sure that Moore's name and his image right, come together as one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight both. I can do that simply by dragging my box around both and highlighting them that way. Or I can click on one, hold down my shift button, click on the second, and they're both highlighted. Now once both highlighted, I'm going to go back up to where it says Arrange. And now I'm going to go to Group. Now when I click to move more, his name is now attached to his image. Right, so now this has become one image. Right? Instead of being two separate ones, it's now one. Now I can share this with my students, and they can now sort all their images as they see fit. So there you have it. Um, two quick little tips on how to make Google Drawings work better for you by ordering and by arranging or grouping your images and Google Drawings. Hope it helps.